uh, with Ukraine, Canada, the United States, and, and Europe. Uh, but first off, uh, thank you, Evan, and thank you, Ipsa, for your strong support uh, of the Ukrainian people. Um, as Evan explained earlier, I'm also a son of Ukrainian refugees. My, my parents were uh, kids when they were in those same refugee camps as Evan's family was as well uh, after the Second World War. And it's unfortunate that we're facing yet another refugee crisis and I'm, uh, uh, all of us here can make a difference to stop that and I'd like to tell you how. Uh, so reach, today I'm reaching out to the power and energy sectors right across the world and uh, how they can help to restore and rebuild Ukraine devastated uh, energy infrastructure. And as you all know, an economy can't function without power. And so Ukraine certainly today is desperately in need of transformers, switch gear, generators, and other equipment. And we're calling on all of you to look through your inventories of either decommissioned, spare, or surplus equipment. Uh, what is happening in Ukraine today is uh, a full-scale invasion. Uh, and we've seen Russia has changed its tactics in November uh, of last year when they, when they were losing significantly in the ground war in Ukraine. They switched tactics to a missile attack. Uh, and today, since, uh, since those missile attacks started, they were in intended to destroy energy infrastructure and destroy civil infrastructure. And uh, today, to this, the stat that I just received over the weekend is over 1,200 missile attacks have been targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure. And to date, we have over 60% of the, of the power generators and over 40% of the electricity grid has been damaged or destroyed. And, um, and in fact, just this morning, I, was, um, I have a, a missile alert app on my phone. So I've been to Ukraine several times since the start of the war, and this is an app that everybody in Ukraine has. And basically, it, you punch the region where you're in, and it'll send you a missile alert attack uh, when it happens. And you have about, about four to five minutes to find shelter. And basically, this morning, I had two missile alert apps uh, targeted. One at three o'clock in the morning, and one at six o'clock in the morning. And this is what the people of Ukraine deal with on a daily basis. Uh, so I'd like to talk to you today about uh, the Energize Ukraine uh, platform and how you can help. So if we can get the presentation up, great, thank you. And I don't have a clicker, is there? I think it's under two minutes, it's perfect, okay, thank you. All right. So the Ukrainian World Congress is a non-government organization. Uh, we've been around for 55 years and we're a registered charity in Canada uh, and in the US. Uh, so all donations are, are subject to charitable uh, receding. Uh, the, um, Um, also, I just wanted to touch base briefly or talk to you briefly about the Kennedy Ukraine Foundation, which is the recipient of the, um, uh, of the donation, the, the very generous donation that Ipsa and all of you are making. Uh, the Kennedy Ukraine Foundation and the Ukrainian Canadian Congress are part of the Ukrainian World Congress Network, and, um, and uh, they have been active over the last year on a number of projects, and I just have them here. There we go. Uh, just in the past, uh, just in the past uh, year, they've raised over uh, set over 70, uh, 52 million dollars, 72,000 donations. Uh, they've been donating food, medicine, shelter, energy, and safety to the Ukrainian people. And what they're focusing on going forward is they're focusing on providing uh, humanitarian relief efforts. So all future funding is going to be going towards providing uh, humanitarian relief. Uh, they have a very interesting surgical program where uh, Canadian doctors travel to Poland to do uh, reconstructive surgery on, uh, on Ukrainian civilians and, and, uh, and wounded soldiers, and also a veterans health in initiative and rebuilding um, primary schools and supporting orphanages. So that's a little bit about where your, where your money is going for the Canada Ukraine Foundation, so thank you for that generosity. So the, um, the presentation today will be available online. I'm gonna zip through most of the slides uh, so we can get to, to coffee break. But this is just a brief video to talk to you a little bit for three minutes about what is going on with the electricity system in Ukraine.
million Ukrainians are without power after Russia's latest missiles attack. Russian attacks continue targeting Ukraine's energy infrastructure. This is where electricity begins its journey from the power plant to the world outside. The first links in a complex chain. Since October, Moscow has been working systematically to sever those links, to break the system into pieces, to break the will of the people. Russia's assault has brought death and darkness to Ukraine's cities. The nights are long and cold, the power cuts frequent, a whole nation plunged into a world of adjustments. And while the country waits, it simply copes. City streets echoing to the sound of generators. Mobile phones lighting the way. Life somehow continuing. And a mounting sense that Ukraine has, for now, weathered the storm. This battle is finely balanced between Russia's ability to inflict damage and Ukraine's efforts to repair it, to give people just enough power to get by. Russia thought it would break Ukraine, but its campaign isn't working. Half the grid may be in tatters, but in helmets and body armor, these men are keeping it alive. The war's terrible cost is evident wherever you look. The sacrifices have been immense. But power, the lifeblood of a nation, still reaches across the land. So as I mentioned, over 40% of Ukraine's electricity infrastructure has been damaged or destroyed. Over 60% of the power stations have been damaged and attacked. Some are very critical, as we've heard about the atomic station in Zaporizhia, which is in, critical situ in a crit critical situation, uh, which has, of course, significant uh, uh, environmental and ecological Im implications as well. Um, We see that the uh, lives of innocent people have been, has been destroyed. Uh, we see that uh, there are seniors trapped in their 18-story apartment because the elevator is not working because there's no electricity, where they don't have heat, where they don't have access to natural gas, where their communication systems have been destroyed. And this is happening in, in the center of Europe. We see that uh, people, again, are without electricity. We also are seeing that you know, people are freezing. Uh, we see that the weather will be getting better over the spring and into the summer. We anticipate that these missile attacks will continue. Uh, we're seeing that there are sophisticated drones being sent at this infrastructure. And we need to continue to help shore up Ukraine's electricity grid throughout the summer and, quite frankly, into next fall and even next winter. We have to prepare for the worst. So my plea to all of you today is you can help the people of Ukraine. And you can help the people of Ukraine by joining the Energize Ukraine Coalition. The purpose of the coalition is to create a global platform where we as the energy sector globally can help rebuild Ukraine's electricity infrastructure. And Ukraine is looking for uh, critical equipment, transformers, generators, switch gear, and other equipment whether it's used, whether it's surplus, whether it's decommissioned, they're prepared to take really anything that we are prepared to give. And the Ukrainian World Congress, in partnership with various industry associations and different uh, government agencies, is creating that the logistics platform in order to help, A, identify equipment, and then number two, to make sure that it gets to Ukraine in the most uh, effective way possible. 
Some of our partners here are listed and we encourage both uh, uh, private, uh, private sector corporations, industry associations, government agencies uh, to, join, to join the coalition and together we can certainly make that difference. How it works is, first of all, we identify the need, uh, which is available on our website. So we're constantly updating this information from Ukrainian authorities, whether it's the state transmission company, whether it's the Parliament Ministry of Energy, they're constantly updating us on our website. So if you could check us out at energizeukraine.com, their active list is what is needed. And uh, we, we, so if you can identify within your companies what you have in terms of surplus that you can give based on that list, we will then uh, do a technical, quick technical review with the Ukrainian engineers on the other side. We will formulate the proper documentation uh, and arrange logistics and make sure that it is delivered and reported back to you where it's been delivered and how it is being utilized. So in conclusion, again, I do encourage all of you to, 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 to join. Uh, what is really interesting about the future of Ukraine is we will be seeing a rebuild of a, a better, bigger, more uh, environmentally friendly, digitized Ukraine. And today, the estimate is well above $500 billion to reconstruct what has been destroyed in Ukraine. And every day it gets even more and more. And so I encourage those companies that A, are interested in being part of that uh, rebuild, that reconstruction of Ukraine after Ukraine wins the war and pushes Russia out of Ukraine, then today is a time to get involved. Today is a time to donate, to make a difference, because that will enable you and give you a front row seat into that large reconstruction of Ukraine in the future. So thank you very much for your interest. Uh, I will be at the Rodan Energy booth in the trade show area, so if you have any questions or want to talk about this further or have equipment that you think your company can donate, please come and see me. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. And together, we can make a difference to help the people of Ukraine. Thank you.